Hi everybody, having understood the balance sheet in real detail, let's now look at two ways in which a commercial bank can fail. The first way is if a commercial bank doesn't have enough liquid short-term assets, also known as current assets, to meet its short-term liabilities, i.e. its current liabilities. What we then get is a bank run. Panic sets in, there is a run on the bank, there is a liquidity crisis within the bank. They don't have enough liquid short-term assets to meet their short-term liabilities. The second way is when the bank doesn't have enough capital to offset any losses in asset values, i.e. we get to a situation where liabilities will be greater than assets. The bank will owe more than what it owns, which means that the bank will therefore fail because the balance sheet won't balance. That is called insolvency. Both types, insolvency and a liquidity crisis or a bank run, are the two types of bank failure. Let's look at my balance sheet from my previous video and understand these two in more detail. Let's say that all depositors and all short-term lenders to the commercial bank want their money back right now. Well, you can see that that will be £65 million worth of money that this commercial bank has to pay right now. These two are the current liabilities, are the short-term liabilities. So does this commercial bank have enough short-term liquid assets, i.e. current assets, to pay that money off? Well, no, they don't. They've only got £20 million worth. The four current assets or short-term assets are cash, reserves at the Bank of England, money at short notice, and short-term investments. These are the four current assets. This commercial bank currently has only got £20 million worth of these short-term assets. They've got £65 million of short-term liabilities to pay, which if they had to pay those off right now, they can't do it. There will be a run on the bank, there will be a liquidity crisis here, the bank would fail. This is when you see these huge queues outside high street banks where individuals want their money back right now. That's a run on the bank. So a liquidity crisis is what would be the result there. What about insolvency? Let's take a scenario where all the loans that this bank has issued go completely bad. £40 million worth of advances in this case go completely bad. Well, they are going to be wiped off the balance sheet, written off loans here. So £40 million gone. Remember, that needs to be offset by a loss in capital. There needs to be enough capital to offset the losses in those loan values. Does this bank have enough capital? No. They only have £35 million worth of capital. What's going to happen? Well, £40 million worth of advances go, which means that total assets would be £76 million. But only £35 million worth of capital is what the commercial bank has, which means liabilities can only fall to £81 million. That means that liabilities will be greater than assets if all these loans go bad. The bank will owe more than what it owns. That is called insolvency, as we've learned. This bank will fail in that scenario there. So we understand a bank run, we understand insolvency as the two sources of bank failure. But crucially, guys, you need to know that banks don't necessarily fail in isolation. When they fail, it can cause a ripple effect throughout the financial industry. This is known as systemic risk. It's not just the commercial bank that loses out when they fail, it's other banks that can lose out too. Other banks who are holding assets that this commercial bank was liable to pay, well, those assets now are worthless. If that commercial bank doesn't have enough capital to offset the loss in those asset values, then they can go insolvent, they can go bankrupt. What about then another commercial bank who's holding assets that the second commercial bank was liable to pay? Well, those assets might be completely worthless, in which case that commercial bank may not have enough capital to offset the loss in those asset values. They may go bankrupt, insolvent, right? So we understand that there might be a ripple effect when one commercial bank goes insolvent or if there is a bank run that they are suffering from, i.e. if this commercial bank uh, fails, then it's lots of other commercial banks that can also take the hit and may also fail as a result. That's known as systemic risk, where one commercial bank failure can lead to many other banks failing, which could then bring down the entire financial sector, i.e. what happened in 2008. There are tools available, though, which can help prevent that. Let's understand those. These are all tools available to financial market regulators to prevent bank failure, to reduce the risk of bank run, to reduce the risk of insolvency. Let's understand first the cash ratio. Just to let you know, guys, I've covered this in lots of detail in my financial market regulation video where we cover ratio analysis. Go and watch that in this playlist if you want much more detail. This is just a quick overview. So the cash ratio, imposing it or increasing it, that is forcing commercial banks to hold enough cash assets to meet their short-term liabilities. That reduces the risk of a bank run. 
We've got a liquidity ratio or a current ratio, which includes all the current assets, so all these four. Enforcing that or increasing that will make sure that a commercial bank holds enough short-term liquid assets to meet its short-term liabilities again, reducing the risk of a bank run. We've got something known as a leverage ratio, that is looking at the ratio of capital to advances and also long-term investments to make sure that a commercial bank holds enough capital to offset any losses in long-term investments and advances, which in theory will reduce the risk of insolvency. So maybe imposing a leverage ratio or increasing the leverage ratio will be the regulation there. You've got capital ratios. That's very simply looking at the ratio of capital to advances, so the capital to loans ratio you can consider. And the whole idea of this is to make sure that a commercial bank will hold enough capital to offset any losses in loans that is issued there, again to prevent the risk of insolvency and to reduce therefore the risk of bank failure. You've also got the reserve requirements, so maybe imposing that or increasing that, and that is by law uh, making sure that when deposits are put in the commercial bank, a certain fraction are kept in the Bank of England, at the bank account within the Bank of England there. So imposing a reserve requirement or increasing the reserve requirement will make sure that the bank has always got enough liquid assets, cash in this case really, to uh, meet the needs of depositors or any other short-term liabilities that they are liable to pay. So increasing the reserve requirement or imposing it will make sure that enough liquid assets are always held to meet any short-term liabilities, preventing the risk of a bank run and therefore bank failure. These are all covered in my financial market regulation video where we look at ratio analysis Go and watch that video for more detailed understanding. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one.